Winter Roses, Summer, by Fairytale Lover, Chapter 21, Monopoly. They got to the harbour just before dawn, so by the time John tiptoed into his bedchamber, the sun was barely peeking out. He smiled from the door, seeing Danny lying on her side, a pillow propped under her baby bump for support, and Ghost sprawled on his side of the bed, tongue lolling out. The dire wolf raised his head as he heard the door open, but John shushed him. Ghost looked to Danny, and John could almost feel the effort he was making to not wag his tail. As carefully as he could, the wolf jumped to the floor and went to greet John. Careful to keep his chuckles inside, John played with his companion and then opened the door for him to leave. He chucked his boots and cloak off as quietly as he could and then crawled onto the bed, kissing a string of kisses from Daenerys's forehead to her bump paying special attention to the little foot kicking beneath the skin. She finally stirred, barely opening her eyes. Ah, you see, you deemed it reasonable to return home, my lord husband. She mumbled sleepily. John chuckled. She was obviously still grumpy he had gone and taken so long to return. That is no way to speak to a knight of the realm, lady wife. She hummed as he continued to caress the spot where their child was demanding attention. Then she stilled as the words registered. A knight of the realm? she asked, and John nodded with a smile. I must still be dreaming. Why? Have you always dreamed about marrying a gallant knight? Why? Are you jealous, Lord Starling? Her voice was playful as he inched her nightdress up to be able to see her bump uncovered. She winced, rolling to her back and trying to find a comfortable position. Are you in pain? The baby is too squished up in there. And a restless. Kicking my ribs, elbowing my bladder. It's bloody uncomfortable. That's not nice, little one. John said against the skin of her belly. What about you behave and not hurt your mama? They behaved well enough waiting for you, Danny whined. But they can come out now. John chuckled and kissed the rebellious little foot. So, you were about to tell me about becoming a knight? John chuckled, not moving away, and told her what had happened on the final match of the tourney. When he was done, she slapped the back of his neck and he exclaimed in protest, What was that for? You jumped into a foolish duel with Gregor Clegane with no armour on, John! Are you mad? I couldn't just let him kill Sir Loris. How many knights were there? You didn't need to get involved. I told you, I didn't notice. That's no excuse. Don't you remember what he did at the sack? How do you think I would feel if I had to hear that I lost another member of my family because of that monster? That I lost you? How do you think I would feel if I had to tell your child you were killed because you were a fool? John shivered. Of course he remembered what had happened to Princess Rhaenys. Prince Aegon, and Elia Martell. After the fact, remembering what he had told his father and Sir Barristan at the pavilion, he was certain that was the impression he had. Rather than a fear for his siblings, it was fear because his wife's good sister, niece and nephew. He also was reminded of the nightmare that had been plaguing him ever since leaving King's Landing. A woman's laughter though her face was too hazy to be recognised. A northern lullaby. And the words, My baby boy, I love you, my little prince. Promise me, Ned. Love him for me, Ned. Tell him I held him in my arms but once. But I love him so much. I'm scared, Ned. I don't want to die. I'm sorry, John said sheepishly. I wasn't thinking. No, you certainly were not. John felt his ankles go up. Look, I gather you're upset, but I'm fine. I put him on his back and I was knighted. Oh, how silly of me. You were knighted and everything is perfect so long as you play the hero. I didn't do it for glory. Daenerys went to give a scathing reply, but the baby gave a particularly harsh kick and she fell back on the pillows with a grimace of pain. All the anger and the fight left John, a 
as he saw her discomfort, and he decided to let it go for now. How can I help? She let out a deep breath, deciding to postpone her anger as well. The baby likes it when you sing. What is it with you and getting me to sing? I like your voice. Please? He sighed, but complied. He could never deny her anything. Ella knocked on the door and walked into Ned's solar without actually waiting to be granted entrance. Is there any particular reason as to why we're buying chamomile tea in droves? Ned asked, barely looking up. I never knew you liked tea so much. Well, you were the one going on about disguise, and I'm not buying it in droves. Perhaps slightly more than usual, but it's a reasonable amount, when we don't have a garden. Disguise? He frowned, then took a look at her. The only disguise she had on, apart from her sudden distaste for purple, was the lighter coloured hair. The light colour of honey. You can't mean your hair, he exclaimed, and she nodded. How do you dye your hair with tea? Do you really want to discuss what I do with my hair? He began rising an eyebrow until he saw the letter she held in her hands, and anxiety kicked in. What did he say? That you're as stubborn as a blinder ox, as reasonable as a door most of the time, and has less sense than a newborn if you really thought you had effectively buried the story. Ned was annoyed, though he was actually expecting something worse. Well, your brother is never shy to voice his opinion of me. Ella chuckled. He will forever be bitter that you managed to disarm him. Let him be bitter. But if it weren't for Holland and Leanna's screams, he would have certainly regained the upper hand. You and my brother have too much of the same frame of mind, Ella said, rolling her eyes. You are both stubborn, honourable fools. Has he given a name? Ned insisted not wanting to delve deeper into the subject. He did not like Ella's displeased face. He said that Sir Barristan was the last of the King's Guard a Rhaegar would have trusted. Jamie Lannister was too new to the capital, and he was in King's Landing, not fighting at the Trident. Sir Jonathan Darry and Sir Gawain Gwant were too much of the King's creatures, and Prince Lewin was, of course, too much of a risk, as Rhaegar hadn't told Ellie yet. And... And... she sighed. John Connington. He was one of Rhaegar's closest friends. Some even say he was in love with his Silver Prince. Connington disappeared to never be heard of again. Some say he drank himself to death. Yes, that's about as likely as him swearing fealty to Robert. And he disappeared while taking Viserys Targaryen away to safety. I don't know what to think. He was such a good friend to Rhaegar that I understand him saving his brother. But why disappear? Escape Robert. You know what happened to Griffin's roost. I know. But I don't think he knew. He would have declared for Rhaegar's son. He wouldn't have vanished into thin air. Oh, I suppose I can rest easy then, Ned said, clearing his throat. As you said, it has been sixteen years. Ella smiled. You worry too much, my love. Then she caught herself and stood up from her position against the desk. Ned held her arm, entwining their fingers. You're making things hard again, she whispered. Ned stood up, and she looked up to him. He was completely bewitched by her purple eyes. He had fallen completely and irresistibly for them, back in Harrenhal. And now, seventeen years and a lifetime later, and they were just as entrancing as they had been then. She was his drug. I'm only human, he said quietly. Their lips met halfway, urgent and desperate. Benjamin walked through the kitchen, trying to be as inconspicuous as possible. He knew if the cook caught him again, she'd brandish her ladle violently. He finally found her in the service yard, sitting in the sun, sewing a starling winter rose onto yet another baby blanket. That child will end up having more blankets than time to use them. Ayla chuckled. That child will be born in the time of the summer snows, she said, looking up from her work. And I think you underestimate how slowly things take to dry up with bad weather. 
and how many blankets a newborn goes through every day. He offered her the simple bouquet he had in his hands. She smiled softly, putting the blanket aside and accepting the flowers. They were orange-red, like fire, and had the format of bells. These are new ones, Isla said, breathing them in. Fire flowers, Benjamin said with a satisfied smile. The boys at the village said they grow at the foot of the volcano. They are lovely. Thank you, she said, blushing. Benjamin frowned. What is it? She looked up at him. What are we doing? He was startled by the question. Then he blushed too. He took a moment to consider what to say. I... The kitchen bell started to ring. Isla took the flowers and the blanket and stood up. I have to go. You should go too. They'll be in the great hall soon enough. Before Benjamin could react, she had vanished inside the kitchen, leaving him standing there, confused and befuddled. Mines! They have mines! Kevin Lannister flinched as his older brother yelled, throwing the letter onto the desk and standing up so suddenly and furiously his chair tumbled over. From what we know, these mines only hold one gem of importance. Nothing too worrying, he said, trying to smooth things over. Tywin was less than appeased. A gem that seems to be garnering quite the interest. Lancel said the jewellers are praising it, saying it's strong and beautiful and precious. Not to mention how the boy put himself in the public eye. Honestly, Clegane must have been drunk. First he lost, then he decapitated his own fucking horse in front of everybody, then he goes to commit the stupidity of attacking the Tyrell boy and is thrown on his back by a bastard boy so green he would still be clutching the skirts of his whore of a mother if she was still around. Surely if the Queen refuses to wear anything with this gem... Seems Cersei butchered that, Tywin said, pursing his lips, displeased. After what that boy Prince did in Winterfell... People are garnering sympathy for the bastard and the dragon spawn. This is exactly what we were trying to avoid. I should have sent an assassin after the girl years ago. Now the boy's stupidity shielded her again, and Robert has fallen in love with a bastard. Robert is a fool. He set up the match to weaken Daenerys Targaryen, and he is now giving gifts and titles to the bastard at every chance he gets. Yes, he is a fool, but he is the one who wears the crown. This is terrible, Kevan. They have mines and ours are running dry. We can hold on for a few years yet. Yes, but how many? If we start lowering our standards, people will pounce. So we can't cut expenses. Calling in the crown debt would make us rich again. But people would wonder why. We need to find something. You could argue mines are exclusive to the Westerlands. Find a way to legally forbid the boy to explore his. Kevin said. Tywin was silent for a moment. It's not a completely foolish idea. If I play it right, Ned Stark won't even notice what he's agreeing to until after it's done. And what will he be agreeing to? Monopoly. Each region claims monopoly on its greatest export. We won't be able to sell food anymore, Kevin argued. We sell food amongst ourselves, brother. The Reach is the greatest exporter. I can get the Tyrell support. If I give the Vale wheat and corn, I can lure Lysa Aaron. If I pose it to Ned Stark as if to give the Northern wool and timber, he might agree. And if the Westerlands can claim monopoly on mining, Kevin deduced, then the boy will have to pay us a tax to be able to explore his mines. That solves two birds with one stone. We get an income and he doesn't get as much money. But if Ned Stark notices, I'll plan it carefully. Tywin said dismissively. He could do it. He could revolutionise the way the economy worked, getting his fortune built back up in the process. After all, what was the Lannister name without the gold to back it up? John and Danny had joined Benjamin, Bran and Sam in the Great Hall for breakfast. It was heartwarming to see Bran smiling, recovering a bit of his old self rather than the angry little boy he had become ever since he'd woken up. Rob had had to leave for Winterfell, since the acting Lord Stark had been away for far too long already. But Bran had asked to stay a little while longer, to meet his future niece or nephew. Which, of course, hadn't been denied. Theon had evidently left with Rob. Did you see many knights? Bran asked animatedly. How was the tawny? Who won? Uh, 
Well, that John flushed, and Daenerys pursed her lips, displeased. Don't tell me you competed! Benjamin exclaimed. Did you win? Kind of. I thought it best not to compete in the melee after they crowned me the victor in the jousting. Are you daft? Benjamin cried. You're wonderful with a sword. Were you afraid of the knights? You're not so good with the lance, though. Danny needled with a smile. How did you win against all the experienced knights? Bran was the most excited. John, blushing each moment more, told the story of rescuing Sir Loras from Sir Gregor. You really defeated the mountain? Bran asked in awe. John smiled timidly. I did. So, Sir Loras insisted I should be crowned victor in his stead, since I saved his life. And what else? John looked at Daenerys, who was biting her lower lip to keep in her response. The king told me to kneel, he said, and Bran gasped. And knighted me right there. Well, look at that. Benjen laughed. Sir John Starling, Lord of the Blessed Island. How are things here? John asked, conspicuously looking around. Daenerys wasn't fooled by his lack of subtlety. I kindly asked them to leave, she said bitingly. Mother was being a bit rude, Bran said. But it was Uncle Edmure who was really annoying. Uncle Benjen has found a lady love, Danny said, only to change the subject. Benjen blushed deeply. Really? John exclaimed. Who is it? Daenerys is exaggerating. The gardeners have seen him collecting flowers, Danny revealed. And I caught him singing. Whoever she is, Uncle, I approve. You don't even know who she is, Benjen mumbled, watching from the corner of his eye as Isla walked into the room. He bit back a smile when he saw the fire flowers weaved into the braids of her hair. She makes you happy, John said. That's why I approve. Unless she's trying to take advantage of you, then we disapprove. She isn't, Daenerys said, trying not to laugh at the way Isla had flushed, and Benjamin was trying hard to look everywhere but at her. I approve of it madly. It's high time this castle saw a marriage. Benjamin choked on a bite of sausage, and across the room Isla dropped a jar of root beer the metal clinking loudly on the floor. John looked at the mess, then at the way his wife was trying to keep her laughter in. He squeezed her hand, nodding his head in the housekeeper's direction, widening his eyes. Danny smiled and nodded. John laughed. Well, I approve of it madly too. He turned a bit and Danny saw that he was about to do and squeezed his hand, shaking her head no. He frowned but relented relaxing back on his chair. Vera sneaked around the hidden passageways, unaware of the man Littlefinger had watching him and several spies watching near Ned Stark. What can I do for you, Lord Varys? Ned asked, clearing his throat as soon as the man had entered his solar and closed all the windows and both doors. Vera smiled. Both Ned and the governess had red-kissed lips and were slightly discomposed. The spider decided remarking on his unfortunate interpretation would only start the conversation on the wrong foot. So he ignored it. More like what I can do for you, my lord. There are things you must know. You are the king's hand, and the king is a fool. Your friend, I know, yet a fool nonetheless, and doomed unless you save him. Doomed how? Ned stiffened, anxious. He means Cersei. Ella said, wondering why Varys hadn't insisted on a virtual stranger leaving the room. Varys smiled. Yes. I can't believe that. Not even Cersei. He is her husband, Ned protested. Do you remember the melee, my lord? Cersei told him not to fight, Ned insisted. She forbade him to fight. In front of his little brother, his knights and half the court. Ella pointed out, do you know of any surer way to force that fat fool into the melee? Ned widened his eyes in warning, but Ella only rolled her eyes. Oh, please. I'm not enough of a fool to think Lord Varys doesn't know who I am. I have to say I only had the strongest suspicions until the door opened today, my lady. I'm no one's lady, Lord Varys. Not anymore. But I know you. You won't tell anyone. Not yet, at least. How can we know that? Ned asked, his voice full of concern. 
because it had cost me my head, probably cost you your position, but it wouldn't help Robert or Varys in anything, Ella explained, and it would open the handship to the Lannisters, which is most likely the last thing this realm needs. That is not how the spider works. A sharp as always, my lady. Varys smiled indulgently, but we digress. The Lannisters grow tired of Robert, Lord Stark. It won't take much longer before they try again. Joffrey is old enough to be secured as an heir, without much trouble, while Cersei rules as regent. Why did you not come to me earlier? It's been a fortnight since the tourney. I wanted to see what you would do, quite honestly. Obviously I was sounding out other attempts, and there have been none. I did not know if I could trust you, my lord. Would you be so invested to help Robert once you saw the king was? Are you accusing me of treason? Ned asked furiously. He as tenacious as his mother, isn't he? Lord Starling, I mean, though he inherited his skill with a sword from his father. Ned paled, his face losing all signs of colour. I don't. Please, Lord Stark, do you really think the Prince of Dragonstone of all people can disappear and the Master of Whisperers won't know where he went. With that distinguishing hair and indigo eyes of his, that no one would notice we were dealing with Rhaegar Targaryen, regardless of the name he called himself? That he'd sent three of the Kingsguard to a remote location in the south, and I wouldn't know? I've kept quiet for sixteen years. I won't speak now. What do you want? Viserys Targaryen is on the move. I thought the boy was hiding in Essos. So did I, actually, as surprising as that is. And no longer a boy. He is twenty and one now. But it is not what concerns me. He is not the rightful king. Ned sighed. Are you going to tell Robert? Vera smiled. I could have told him years ago about this little truth, Lord Stark. I haven't. Why? Why murder an innocent child just because a man is blinded by jealousy? Varys asked, shrugging. I know you mistrust me, my lord. You're right, too. The Red Keep shelters two sorts of people, Lord Stark. Those who are loyal to the realm, and those who are loyal only to themselves. Until recently, I could not say which you might be, and now I know for a certainty. I begin to comprehend why the Queen fears you so much. Well... Yes, I do. It seems she ought to fear you, too, Ned said. Varys's smile grew. Oh, she doesn't fear me. Because if she says, kill him, Robert won't ask why before calling for Ellen Payne, and off goes my head. But you are right. She ought to. I don't serve Robert or any other king. I serve the realm. Because someone must. The common people who suffer under despots and prosper under good kings. Robert is not a despot, I will say that about him, and he is unquestionably an improvement on the mad king. But he has no interest in being king. We both know that Jamie Lannister's bastard will be a tyrant, perhaps even worse than the mad king himself. Ned gasped. So it is true. Vera smiled indulgently. Little truths, Lord Stark. I deal in little truths. I could have uncovered it and ended the Baratheons years ago, but then Robert would demand their heads and lose Lord Tywin's support. You know we depend on Lannister Gold to keep the kingdom fed. How did John Arryn die? Ned asked. Tears of Lease, it's called. Fancy, Ella said, and then raised an eyebrow. And very expensive. It's nearly undetectable, but for the Grand Maester to not have even suspected it. I am glad to see that Dornish education still holds its standards, my lady. Ella wasn't flattered. Why? Pycella's in Tywin Lannister's pockets. There'd be no need for theatre. Vera shrugged. That is actually befuddling me. Did Pysa notice and hide it? Or did he really not notice? Was it really the Lannisters? I can't say for sure. Who else would it be? Ned asked. Oh, some dear friend, no doubt. But who? Lord Arryn had so many. All I know are the signs of the poison that I recognised. Lord Arryn started asking questions, and he drew Stannis Baratheon into his quest. 
Less than three moons later, Lord Arryn was dead, and our master of ships disappeared to Dragonstone as soon as the king left through the God's Gate. What is it you want, Lord Varys? Ned demanded. We both know who is the true king of the Seven Kingdoms. Robert is the king, Ned stated, and Ella scoffed. Varys smiled again. I am not proposing to overthrow him. No, that would hardly be beneficial to the people. A bloody war that would kill an uncountable of thousands. I suggest we get the realm in order. Balance the treasury. You can command a little bit more reason into the king than John Arryn ever could. And I'm saying I won't see Joffrey sitting on the Iron Throne. I dare say Joffrey would call for a great number of heads, only because he was able to do so, Alice said. Ned took a deep breath. How do I protect my son and good daughter? Vera smiled. I am very glad you asked. End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed that one. I like that one. One little thing I've noticed throughout these chapters is that Daenerys likes when Jon sings. Another call to him being Rhaegar's son, due to Rhaegar being both a singer and a harpist. I like that little nod. Also, <laughs> Isla and Benjamin, that's freaking cute. And the fact that Jon picks it up because he can read Danny so well. Nice touch. And Varys uncovering Ella, knowing who she was, and her just not being shocked at all. Clever woman, Ella. And, oh God, I love this. So they're going to try to keep Robert alive, which is going to be interesting. Normally he dies pretty quickly. Anyway, you guys know the drill. Like, comment and subscribe and hit that bell to get notified for whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day, night or whatever time zone you're in. Bye my guys, gals and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Take care.